Welcome back to the Dino Bidala Show. It's Friday, October 21st, the third hour every Friday. You know what happens. It's what just happened. As we look back at in the insanity of the week, and today we only have two people as opposed to three, and that's by design because they're both great, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> so why have a third as a, a third wheel when you got Judy Gold and Keith Price? Judy Gold, you've seen her, not just on our show, countless shows. You've seen her own specials on HBO, Comedy Central, won two Emmy Awards, working as a producer for Rosie O'Donnell's show. She has her book. Yes, I can say that, which we talked about on my show, and she's got a podcast, Kill Me Now. And Wait, Dean, you got to po- book my date, uh, p- plug my dates so I get people in the audience. And what's your dates? You got to tell well, me. Well, tomorrow, is it, I is this, when is this airing? Tonight, on Friday. Tonight, okay, so we're right here live. Um, tomorrow, <laughs> right? I am at the Sunshine Cathedral for the Performing Arts in Fort Lauderdale, and then on November, on November 5th, which is 10 days before my 60th birthday, Kill Me Now, I'm at the Greenwich Odium Theater in uh, East Greenwich, Rhode Island. Oh, Rhode Island. Yeah. Rhode Island. Excellent. And also back, our friend Keith Price, comedian, actor, podcaster, radio talk show host, guest critic for New York One on stage. Keith, welcome back, my friend. Hello, Habibi. How you doing? Doing good, my friend. <laughs> hey, Miss Judy. How are you, honey? I'm good. This is the gayest show I think you've ever had, Dean. I, well, me, I don't know. It could be, we had Jim on last week. Who was on with him? I'm not sure. We had Jim David. It's all right. But look, I'm- Yeah, that's a lot I of gay. everyone. Right I'm here. I've had the most Muslim shows, the most women. So today's the gayest show ever. And by the way, both Judy and Keith are doing spots in Indictment Excitement, which is the stand-up comedy show John Fugel sang's in it. I'm doing some spots and it's off Broadway running till next Friday, October 28th. Website, Indictment Excitement. So if you're coming to New York, want to see a very funny progressive political stand-up show, indictmentexcitement.com. So let's start with Liz Truss, British mm-hmm. Prime Minister. She worked for years to get this job and after 45 days, she quit. Have you ever had a job you worked at for a long time that you wanted so badly and you got it and you quit after 45 days? Of either of you, or have you ever quit at any job in just 45 days? So, Judy, let's start with you. You probably had a handful of jobs <laughs> over your life. What, what has happened? I, you- I think, you know, you're talking to two comedians. Mm-hmm. Right. We don't quit. We don't quit. We don't ever <laughs> quit. A comedian, even if they have a joke that doesn't work, they don't, it's hard to even quit the joke. Right. Okay. So no, I have never quit. Um, you know, I I have the critical parent in my head 24 hours a day and Judith, you know, there's no way you don't quit. We it's but you know, she had to quit. But the, yeah. here's the worst part. But she didn't really have to. I mean, I guess but she was losing she, the support within her own party and that's how you well, have to go. Well, first of all, she was elected. She was not even elected. She was put in there by right. 160,000 white men. Okay. But here's the thing. The the thing that made me so upset, and I know it's so stupid, is like Queen Elizabeth died thinking she was going to be, like she got to see Queen Elizabeth like right like <laughs> days before she died. And, and now Queen Elizabeth is up there going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what about... Boris Johnson had parties breaking the COVID rules and over it came that she had one bad budget proposal and she had on. So I don't know. She has a vagina. Maybe that could do uh, anything to do with it. That might be it. That just might be it. What what is your take on the 45 days and she had it? I'm out of here. And the day before in parliament, I was watching their ask parliament questions, ask prime minister. And she's like, I'm not a quitter. I'm not a fighter. I'm a fighter. I'm not a quitter. And the next day cut to, I'm out of here, folks. Well, what is your take on this whole thing, my friend? Well, as, as Judy would say, we don't ever quit, but we have been fired. <laughs> oh, you're not kidding. You know, that, that's happened within 45 days. Hello. <laughs> within 45 minutes. Yeah. That's exactly. So we've, we've lived that reality. Um, but, but, you know, with this particular thing, I find it fascinating, though, that, you know, <laughs> it's, it's she's the one that's being given the hard time with only 45 days of work to be able to put any kind of effort into this job. And it's like, you know, as a person of color, I can tell you having done certain things, especially with uh, this particular entity, that right. when you are the when you are the person of color and you're stepping into this arena for the first time to experiment in something, you are not necessarily given the opportunity to mess it up or to hmm. make a mistake or to put it together. That's usually reserved for the white men. 
because even with women, some women don't get that option either. They, you know, it, of course, if they sleep with a the producer, they can do a whole lot of other things. But I'm just saying, in general, like they don't get okay, that. Okay, you're you're that intimating option. that the producer is a man and it, it could the be woman, the and Who it knows? could be the opposite. Could and, be the opposite. Yeah, and so I also well, don't forget about Margaret Thatcher. She she <laughs> she was there for a while, but yeah, yeah. lady, she was there a long, long time. Long, yeah. long time. But you know her her proposals with the tax cuts, the deregulation, the borrowing money, the whole, you know, the whole Republican right wing playbook didn't work. And their and their what is it? Their energy bills went up 80% or something. It didn't work. And that's what our GOP wants. Mm -hmm. So in a, it's, it's kind of good news for us because well, for us, we were the ones of us who were paying attention. Yes, it's fabulous. Right, that's but true. There's no one else. <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> Good point, Keith. <laughs> we gotta get we gotta get the ones that ain't paying attention. Yeah. To like, so, do you think the next person's gonna be another white man? You think it's gonna be Boris Johnson, or could it be the the South Asian guy? Um, I think it's Rini Sinek. I, I'm probably destroying his name. Or do you think they're gonna go back to white? Like, okay, we tried a white woman, guys. I told you, no oh, woman. Oh, please. Can, back to a man. Let's do a man. Dean. Is that what they're gonna Dean. do? Dean and Keith, yes, this is what I have to say. We're oh. all comics, we're all comedians. When I started and I would call comedy clubs and mm -hmm. say, uh, hi, I'm Judy Gold. I just did like Caroline's Comedy Hour Evening at the Improv and I really like to work your club. This is before I had an agent. And they would say, we had a woman here three months ago. <laughs> she didn't do well. We're not booking women. Okay, yep. that is the reality of this world. You can yep. see it in Iran. You can see it in the United States of America. Uh, I think the war on women is coming to a big head full of pus. And, you know, uh, we're not going to take it anymore. But yes, let, I do honey, think- Honey, let it ooze, honey. Let yeah, it ooze. Yeah, let it. Who, by the way, Judy- on the pimple popper. Yeah. Judy, who, ah! Judy, who books She's Caroline's hot, Comedy Hour? <laughs> Who knows who books Caroline's comedy? Album? Oh my God, that was Very, 1989. I know you You know the first I time I saw Judy. Can I can I just do this to embarrass Judy? But she won't remember. You're not going to remember because we didn't know each other. I was a patron, and I went to Caroline's at the Seaport. Oh my seaport. God! And you were opening maybe for Kevin Nealon or someone. We went there, and I always remember Judy because she came out and she's like, "It's Judy's show." It's Judy. Oh yeah. And she had the hair that went down. And a little the, curl, yeah. Yes. A little curl. And I, I didn't do comedy. I didn't even start comedy for years after that. And then I met you and I was always intimidated. I'm like, that's the woman from Caroline. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's hilarious. It took a long but, time to get over that. I'm people like, still come up to me on the street and scream, it's Judy show! show! Yeah. Right, oh my, God. but that's, that's when I discovered Judy. And I, this is when I was living in Texas watching, was it Comedy Central or the Comedy Channel? I can't remember what it was. Yeah. And it's like you talking about sliding down on a spit, a spit curl, curl. Yeah. like the 60s and i from that moment on for me i was like wow with who is this woman she's crazy and then i remember meeting you for the first time like i remember it was like the toyota comedy festival oh God, thing remember that? yes yeah. at stand up new york or something that was going on and i remember meeting you then and i was like oh my god you're that woman it's Judy show you look at me like queen please i gotta go no <laughs> i did not <laughs> I'm Queen. very loving. I'm loving. Queen. There you go, Keith. It's a love fest. Judy is. Judy is. Uh, well, we're not making this all about Judy, but Judy is. <laughs> uh, no, I like this. I love this show. It's my favorite episode. <laughs> you, you, you have such yeah. a, a hard veneer, but you're such like a, a like a not mushy is not the right word, but like no, I'm mushy and, and protecting of people. Once they get to know, once you get to know them, like that, I can tell. But at the same yeah, time, yeah, that's my act. You have to separate. You know, there's a reason it's called an act. You know. <laughs> well, there are some people who are. Oh yeah, that's true. Off stage, like it just doesn't end. I'm like, yeah, you're like please stop it, because we well, know that's mental. Ill that's mental illness. That's the, all right, so let's let's shift gears <laughs> and talk about something that intersects mental illness, but it, but it's also dangerous. Yeah, and that's Kanye West with the anti-Semitism, saying uh -huh. he was going DefCon three on Jewish people. He blamed them for cancel culture, which seems like a joke, but it's but it still fuels those on the right who don't like minorities, don't like Jews. That you see, they want to cancel us, that kind of stuff. And he said Jews were toying with him. And some people touched on it. Some just wanted to ignore it because of mental health issues. Howard Stern really laced into him, um, like yesterday on Sirius XM, laced into him like no one else has on Kanye about how despicable and vile this is. And it almost seems this weird thing, and I'm not sure, Judy, because we were talking about it backstage last night. 
I mean, is it that people dismiss it because it's Kanye and maybe has issues, his name is G now, or anti-Semitism doesn't get much of a reaction from people. And they go, well, whatever, or it's been around forever that it's part of our dialogue. You know, such a good question, Dean. You know, we were talking about it. And I do say in my act that I think people have anti-Semitism fatigue um, and, and, and are sick of hearing about the Holocaust and, uh, you know, oh, I saw the movie and, and, and know nothing, know nothing. And, you know, there's this whole combining, uh, you know, look, we're 2% of the population in the United States. We're two tenths percent of the population in the rest of the world. And yet we're the oldest hate. We've been kicked out of every country. And <clears throat> I told you this last night. Um, first of all, stop giving Kanye, you know, stop giving him attention, stop vocalizing, you know, get all these companies that work with him say, you know what, I can't, we're not going to do this. This is no, you know, f I, I, am I allowed to curse on this? Yeah, it's your six. Okay, you fuck, fuck your money, your fucking profits. You yep. know, there's a time and a place for you to make your fucking pro it, it, it not at the expense. And there's so much, there's such an increase in anti-Semitism and hate of Israel. You know, do your due diligence, read a book about the Middle East. Um, learn that there are Jews who we think, you know, I love Israel, but I don't think they're perfect in any stretch, but I don't think the United States is perfect. And right. you got to separate these two things. Uh, first, that's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is the fact that I was at Yom Kippur services. Mm -hmm. And I told you this last night there. So I'm sorry, Keith, if I'm monopolizing, but you, you know, I am the Jew on. <laughs> so, um, but this really, so Every year, uh, there's this there's a service called Yisker that is on uh, Yom Kippur, and it is a memorial service. And people leave if they haven't lost, you know, their parents or a sibling or a very close family member. And it's really a it's a beautiful service, and it's a solemn service about just taking that time to remember them. Um, and afterwards, my synagogue has. Um, a Holocaust survivor speak or a child of a Holocaust survivor speak. And this year they had a woman who had spoken years before about her family and she found out more information uh, about them. And she went on the Bema, that's the stage. And uh, <laughs> she told this story about her parents surviving the Holocaust, losing every other one of their family members um, and how the, the kids were separated and how she got to America and all this. Uh, and she had, through the consulate, found all these letters and got all this information and updated everyone on, you know, how she found how her mother got here. And at the end of her presentation, which was, you, you know, you'd sit there with your mouth open. You can't believe it. Mm -hmm. um, she said that she got dual citizenship. And for me, that was like a punch. You know, I remember being a little girl and, and learning about the Holocaust and thinking, oh, that'll, oh, please. You know, no one's gonna knock on my door and tell me to get the hell out. And, and for a child of Holocaust survivors to get dual citizenship in Europe, yep. to me, that is really, I mean, I, I don't, it's, it's a sign and it's, it's upset. It's really upsetting. And it is, it is. And also, you know, I recently watched, first there was the Ken Burns documentary, U.S. Mm -hmm. and the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. But before that on my own, I don't know, about seven, eight months ago, I watched on Netflix a documentary, The Last Days. The documentary Spielberg, oh. one of the producers, but about the Jews in Hungary. And what- I'm, hung, I'm a Hungarian Jew. Oh, you are. But what I take away from that so much of that, the people saying, they were survivors. They had been children. But the same people who were their friends were calling them anti-Semitic names and spitting on them as they were being walked out of their town and taken onto trains to be taken to death camps or just to any to some kind of camp, concentration camps. And you're like, your friends, these were your friends. And now they turn on you like that. And do they do that as self as survival or do they always hate you? Or do, can mass movements make people give up all their morals and their beliefs because 
it's just you're part of the group, and now it's group thinking. It's so it's it's, it's well, learned hate, and I feel now. like Keith. I feel that's like Keith, you know, probably is like, oh, this guy's a great guy, and then finds out, then he says something racist, or or I mean, it happened, right? Yes. Yeah. Have- well, you know, for me, the thing with Kanye West, and I, I've been looking at it because you know I'm Mr. Conspiracy Theory right person and you know it was about two years ago we were watching kanye west sit around with jared kushner and all of these really weird right wingy people plotting to basically be a divisive energy for the black community in general when it comes to voting because what happens is is now we all have these weird conversations it's mental health and what's going on with kanye and kanye is crazy we do you know that conversation is happening amongst black people and it becomes political because he brings in shit like white lives matter t-shirts and hanging out with candace owens and doing all of that like all of that stuff to me looks like a divisive tool that's being used by, you know, whatever that Illuminati right-wingy energy is to bring forth some sort of, of, of divisive energy so that you can, you know, that's what they're dealing with the black people. So black people are having all this crazy conversation while missing the big point of the fact that this is all a big distraction. Oh and yeah, so, and the more attention he gets, exactly. the more they cover it. And, right. and I think also, Dean and I discussed this last night, I think the black community needs to do research and realize that, you know, Jews were marching down there. The Jews That's were killed. Right. The Jews started the NAACP. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, we, it's, it's an allyship that I don't oh. think is being presented. And it goes back to something I've always said before, which is that when you look at all of the major movements around the world that have happened, it, it's happened because the allies of that particular group, which means that they have to be people that are not of that particular group, Mm -hmm. are the ones that are pushing that thing over the finish line for people. That's why we have what we have in this country, because we didn't get we didn't get to have this because there were benevolent white men that finally just said, hey, guys, you know, let's let's just let the black people go and have their way. You know, that did not happen. It had it, it took white men and women at some point eventually, but white men mostly to be able to say that this is going to be enough and we're gonna have to do this, even if it meant them having to, you know, be distanced from their own to do it. And, you know, and that has to happen for everybody. That's how this abortion thing is gonna get handled. When we get men to understand this is not our issue to be fighting. Thank you, you. thank you. You know what? I'm gonna say something really controversial, which is probably gonna get me in trouble, but. (laughs) This is what I live for. Okay. I lived through the AIDS crisis. I watched my friends get sick and die in my 20s. I'm sitting, you know, when I sit around the table with 20 year olds now, I think back. You want to punch them. Well, I want to say, I want to say, you know, (laughs) well, that. And I want to (laughs) say, when I was your age, I didn't know if I was going to be having another dinner. You know, we would be at dinner and be like, oh, I wonder if this one, how much time this one, it's Mm -hmm. really an awful, awful situation. And I feel like my gay brothers, I I have not stepped up uh, to, it's all with the ally that Keith's talking about, the um, have not stepped up to, uh, and been vocal about women's health and women's rights and I'm a lesbian and I was there and we were there for you. That's and, right. And women, and and we need you. We need yep. you and you don't, you use your platform right. to talk about women's health care. That's it. So you're saying all men or you're saying specifically gay men from your own community? Is that what you're talking about? So, so I, I think mean- all men, but uh, but I, I am specifically now for talking about, I wish that that high profile gay men would you know they're they're always vocal about any anti-lgbt stuff i mm-hmm. wish they would be vocal about women's health care as we you know took care of you that's right and love you and you know first of all there'd be no marriage equality if if it god for, if it wasn't for the aids crisis because that crisis brought, was the first time our community was really united right. and yep. you saw you saw these people they lived together for you know 40 years and then their family comes in 
and, and takes says, everything. Takes everything, and these people don't have an apartment. To, can't even go to the funeral of their. Can't even sit yeah. with them by their. And it, it was about dignity. Right. Um, and and you know, come on, people. Yeah. You know, uh, and I'm talking about Judy Gold and Keith Price. Yeah, sorry. Judy, to the point. No, it's okay. To the point of. No, I, I think what you're saying is great. To the point of men, and, and Keith, you're saying it too, but men as allies. I've had men call them on the show and actually inform me of something, and I've been talking about it more on my shows of recent times, that it's not just being an ally to women. For any man in a relationship or will be in a relationship with a woman ever, this is very personal to you because, and I gave Texas, Texas an example, if you swipe right on Twitter, you hook up with a woman, you get her pregnant. In Texas, there's no abortion at all. Under Texas law, you have to pay child support till the child's 18, 20% of your income. And if you don't, you get arrested and go to jail. So for men, it's not like I'm going to be a good guy and be an ally. That's part of it. You have liberty to lose, income to lose, your life. And if you're a right, but couple, I feel but I feel like it's deeper child, than that. You know, Don't you, you, Keith? I, well, see, I, I hear that, and it's sort of yeah. like, who's going to really enforce that? They're not going to. No, they do in Texas that. for child they're, support. I mean, they're not going to enforce that on any. It's not going to be on any white man. They're not going to enforce that on in Texas. I'm from Texas, and I know in the end that law is just a lot of of talk for nothing because all they're doing is really trying to keep women from having an abortion and no, it's like i know that i'm just trying to get i'm trying to tell men they have something to lose personally that it's not right what, but why uh, is it why is it that is where you have to exactly. get the man and finance and you know it's, you're going to be responsible why isn't it self-interest imagine just wrong right imagine the you, government but, telling you right what you that you can't do some your, your body that you right. should die you should right. die before uh yeah. you know and in and the jewish religion back to the jews it is in it is a law that you have to save the the mother's life so you know we could go on religious grounds and say no yep. but it, you know it, it's so deep that i it's like we have to worry about oh you know what you're gonna have to pay money it's like it's yeah. should be like, it should, but those are men who call my show and share that they are uh, right Try to make a point that, yeah, you could be a male ally, but men, it's more than just ally because you want to do the right thing. It's going to affect you directly. And if you're a married couple and uh, your wife gets pregnant or the person you're dating gets pregnant accidentally, unintentionally, whatever, birth control fails, you can't get an abortion. You've got a child. That's it. Your life has changed forever and ever. A second child, it could be a third child if you're a single mom. This is very, this is the real practical thing. To your point, I agree. In the bigger issue, the idea I joked about on my my set, like the Taliban should shoot the GOP for trademark infringement. I mean, like <laughs> impressive <laughs> turning your religion into law to oppress and control women is something the Taliban and Saudi have been doing for decades. They are lit because Roe was gone. They're doing that right now. As we see, there are 13 states. There's no abortion allowed at day one at conception. And that's a religious doctrine turned into law. It is the most un-American thing. Ever. I've heard. I find it despicable. And vile. It's a human rights violation to force women to carry a fetus, a, a rapist fetus, or anyone's fetus to carry the term. To, this should be brought up in the head. What about, what about the, the other, the 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 medical part, like sepsis, and yes. you know, like the, this is what Ectopic they do. Pregnancies, right? You know, like it's like all kinds of women will die. And wrong. a ten-year-old, a ten-year-old. Listen, here's the deal. You know, it, it's. It, it's about women. I mean, it's, you know, it's about equal rights and it's it, to feel like you are, a, I do feel like a second class citizen mm -hmm. in this country. Um, and the fact that they use this, these talking points like, oh, you believe in abortion up until birth. No one believes but, in abortion up but, until birth. But if the mother nobody. is laying yeah. on a table dying, um, that that's, the, the, which is, it's an unusual circumstance, unusual circumstance. That's what they're talking about. But they, they, they have these talking points and the people are so dumb and they, you know, they are like, oh yeah, well I heard blah, 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 blah. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's just, I can't, it's so upsetting. I, it's, it's, go ahead, Keith, please. Oh no, I'm just, I, like I said, I just, I find it horrible that we are spending time and energy in this country dealing with something like this when it is very clear that this was not what the founding fathers themselves were looking at in terms of you know trying to put this country together it's so funny i feel very informed right now because i saw 1776 last week but hold oh, me back how was it i loved it i loved it yeah this whole non-traditional thing to do but yeah but side note is like the interesting thing is like listening to how this country was putting itself together 
and realizing that <laughs> in the process, especially when you see this particular show too, that all of those people that were on stage doing all the conversations of the forefathers and the fighting and the back and forth and the big numbers, it's like all of the effort was not for any of those people that were on that stage. Right. Like that was not for them. It's not for, it's not for us. It was, the, so this whole system was not designed for us to be able to have a say. And right. so right. now that we're able to, so, but now that we're able to have a say, we all need to band together and understand that our say has more to do with us than those people who are in, sitting in charge and doing whatever. And that the system was designed for that. But, you know, we've let a lot of people corrupt the system. And so we are watching, especially now, like I'm very worried about what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks for this voting thing, because we right. never really fixed the problems that we had for the previous elections. In right, but I think Kansas Kansas is a, uh, a bellwether. I think they're... I think no one thought. No, no, no right. one. Nobody and I that. think women are energized. Yeah. I, I think, and even people who look, no one wants to. No, it's not like you get up and you're like, oh, I think I'll have an abortion. And if, <laughs> if, if I'm going to go were, to a gay wedding. <laughs> right. But uh, if they were, it's not your fucking business. It's none, none of your fucking business. None. And. I and and I think women are seeing, you know, to take a right away in, in 2022, we already fought this. If you don't believe in abortion, don't, don't. have an abortion. Exactly. I mean, I, it's, it's the same thing. You don't like gay marriages, then don't go to the wedding because you're probably not invited anyway. Right. And also, <laughs> then don't open a business for weddings, you know, exactly. and say, oh, no, I'm not doing it. Fuck you! No, absolutely, because it's no different than saying I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do services and, for black and, right and couples and interracial gonna, couples right. I was gonna say, but and if you're gonna open a business and you're not gonna have service for people of of whatever people you're keeping out of, then don't be upset when the entire world says fuck you. You're not gonna be able to stay in business right. because that's not the way we're gonna be living our lives from now on. Right, and that's what has to happen. Like I think you. faith is a personal thing. Yeah, and. You know this, Absolutely. and we are because we are a we're just like these other countries with the religious zealots running the government. That's exactly yeah. what's happening. So let's take a, a quick break. We're going to come back and really talk about we're 18 days from the midterm. So you guys have all been hinting at it. So let's talk about that. The issues, Democrats, where, where are they good on messaging? Where are they bad? Because we know our Democrats, we love them, but there's problems. So let's take a quick <laughs> break. We'll come back with Keith Price and Judy Gold right after this. All right, so are you ready? We'll come right back. And by the, as a reminder, Matt comes back on with five minutes just to tell me five minutes. Just ignore him. That's timing for me. No, okay. I don't. I never ignore Matt. All right, well, I, I, <laughs> I know me him. neither. All right, all right here we go. Matt. Stop I it, Matt. Don't come back. Here we go. All right, hey, Matt. Matt. Cute. Hi, Matt. All right, here we go. Ready? And welcome back to the Dino Bidala Show. We're live here Friday, October 21st. We're continuing with what just happened. Judy Gold and Keith Price are still here. They didn't leave during the break like the last week. So here we go. Let's continue 18 days from the midterm. I've been counting it down since 200, telling people this is the most important midterm of our lives. And I say that not hyperbolically. I feel it. So, Keith, let's start with you. What are you feeling just in your gut? What are you feeling about 18 days from now? I, I am trepidatious because I know that there are a lot of um, obstacles that are being placed consistently still being placed to keep people from either voting or to keep them distracted from the actual issues that they would actually be more concerned about voting for or against and in, and, and in their own interests. And so I, I worry that we still have a large sector of this, this country that is still being, that are operating on this like psychotic, crazy, cult-like thought process. And they're in places where they can do damage to folks in terms of getting to the vote, to the poll. And we have not yet figured out a way to deal with that. And so knowing that that's still kind of unleashed and unbridled going on right now, I'm concerned. But I'm also hopeful that people are really starting to pay attention because that's the one thing about the pandemic that I remember very clearly is that people became out of that being a little bit more savvy about things that were happening in the world because they were forced to have to pay attention. And mm -hmm. so I hope that some of that stayed with them through the process because you know, 
we're still trying to figure out what to do with the January 6th people. Like, oh my God, take like, longer, take longer. Exactly. It's like we, had, like we have a flip. To the point of people knowing they're right, we just had on earlier the week for a lawyer from the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. We've had other lawyers on who just deal with election to give people practical, practical, practical advice, like what you should be doing now before you go on election day and just show mm -hmm. up. And even before this window when voter registration was closed and we had people from vote riders and other organizations, because I agree with you, laws have changed in over 20 states. People might not know it. You yeah. gotta do your homework now. Don't just show up on election day, folks, because you might find out you're off, they purged you or they move your right. voting place or you, you're, where's your absentee ballot? Well, they got rid yep. of absentee in your state and you're sitting there waiting for it. So yep. doing the practical work, we have to do it now and then change the laws on the other end. So, But we're also, like all right first of all i i want to be hopeful mm -hmm. even though i have been uh despondent after elections mm -hmm. but you know these poll workers don't feel safe no um the, the, it is it is they get death threats they you know the fact that they're gerrymandering and getting away with it thank the, you um and the fact that that you know to make it it's so obvious they're trying to make it harder for the people whose voice is already mm -hmm. um muted thank you um to to be able to vote i mean come on <laughs> i i just it's i can't it's it's ridiculous i wish i could go in a van and just pick people up and take them to the and everyone's gonna be like you can judy but i you know you can but you'll get arrested if you'll get arrested right yeah. but, but what are you ron DeSantis? You can't. I love it. but judy like so for you you have the same thing as i i just have like it's like a, a frustration of it's like can't you see what is happening in front of you it's that that thing about how when you're in the cave as a thing and they have the fire behind you and the shadows in front if that's what you're seeing and then you turn right, around and right. you see that it's some fool back there making the things in the shadow and you're like why am i afraid of what i'm seeing right. and you want to tell everybody and these people are so afraid of the shadow that they kill you for telling them the truth right. and it's like that's oh that's truth. where we are truth keyword keith you truth. know this country has the weirdest relationship with truth amen and and the fact you know i talked about this on stage last night but the fact that you will cancel a comedian for trying to make you laugh, and yet you will protect someone who is, whose speech incites violence, causes death and destruction, um, and yet they are protected, but a comedian says something you don't like, they should never be able to be honest. It's, it is- Idiotic, it's, it's idiotic. It's ridiculous, and people need to re, I mean, and it's just, for, Fox News is entertainment news. It is not a real news know, program. Entertainment news. But the, the Fox News factor, there's actually a term about what they do mentally. The viewers will not accept facts from anywhere else but there. It is right. unbelievable what they have done. So Trump just sort of in, inherited oh, that I can't, mentality. I can't but okay, so look, we are 18 days out. What would you suggest if you were talking to Democratic leaders, what do you think they should be focused on? Like, what should be the closing message? Because we're in closing message time to get the most people out. So, Keith, I'll start with you. Is there an issue? It doesn't have to be like an actual bumper sticker. Is there one issue or two issues they should be saying, this is it, folks, this is it? Is there, what do you think, Keith? Well, I, you know, <laughs> at this particular point, there are too many of them for them to I know, focus that's why we have to pick And them. it's like, and even if you, if you pick one or two, you're going to isolate the people that are all about the other ones, and they're going to have, you know, their panties are going to be in a wad because they feel like those other things are going to get ignored. And it's like, you know, you the messaging should be is we are getting the shit done and these people aren't. And the more that you keep supporting these people and the more that you keep giving these people air, the less, the, the more things are going to take away from you. It's like, because in the end, all of us that are fighting up here to do this, we, they all have jobs and money and they'll find ways to, to figure out their lives if they have to in this economy and whatever. But, the the rest of us they need to be talking to us and stop fucking around with all these people that don't give shits about what they're wanting to do it's like you need to go out and talk to these black people you need to talk to those native americans in north dakota and south dakota that are getting their shit taken away from them you need to go and find these women that are having all of these issues and get them out and have them understand that <laughs> your rights are being taken away too like you 
privileged white women, these, these, your, your rights are going to get taken away too. Like, because as soon as he realizes he can bang the secretary and everybody else and knock him up, it's, it's going to be at that series, that event for you too. So you, I, I mean, you, I don't know what to tell people. I just I, don't I know, know what to I, tell I'm them. just asking. There's no right or wrong answers. There's whatever. Nothing, you, I don't know what to think. tell them. I don't I, you know, know what else to tell them. I, you, you know, know this is when I miss Bill Clinton because he he could take something and not dumb it down, but sort of just put it in. Look, this is what's happening. And I think, you know, you're asking us for the message, mm -hmm. and yet we're we already you know we're a little we're more i think informed so it's like we i because wow. i really don't understand people who don't <laughs> see this so it's like I hard agree. so mm. i i feel like if someone would say look we had a pandemic that fucked up everything which is why we are in this situation financially and and uh, with the supply chain and when this happened before this is how we got out of it but in the meantime we have been able to do blank 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 and blank and we are going to get through this and we are going to be better for it just you know i know you don't want to be patient I, I mean you know it, it's hard but look how far we have come um, and I think we also have to take a little page from the assholes playbook Amen. of playing on fear. They make everyone afraid. This is going to be, well, we can tell you what you should be afraid of, because if you vote these people in, this is what is going to happen. And, and that's a great point. But also don't forget one thing. We are literally wired different than Republicans. Right. Uh, we, we're, right. We're better than them. We know that. But besides that, and, and <laughs> smarter, better looking, all that. But we fear works for Republican people become Republicans. It's self-selecting, obviously. And the idea of fear, fear, brown people, black people, gay people, whatever it is for liberals. We don't respond to fear unless it's real. So we responded to Trump because it was real. He came after each of our community with the ban Muslims, a, a, you know, mm -hmm. anti-Muslim stuff, anti-Semitic stuff, anti-black stuff. But this is real. So, Judy, to your point, this is a time where it's not fear like they do on the right. People over the border are coming in. This is you're going to lose your fundamental human right. You're going to lose your democracy. Over 50 mm -hmm. percent of the Republican yes, nominees. That's the thing. I think people don't realize that democracy is on the ballot. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, someone needs to go out there and say, it, you know, in 1990 blank. Or, mm -hmm. Look at Iran. Look at Iran. It used to be the greatest, you know, cosmopolitan, you know, yeah, look at what happens. Advice. Right. This is what happens when you start taking people's rights away. Like someone needs to get it through these and and speak with that that um the, the you know, these these Republicans, the way they talk, they talk, they're they're lying. They're spreading yeah. conspiracy theories, but the way they do it, where you like, oh well, maybe, <laughs> you know, and and we're like, I and I, you like, know, you know, it's, it's what like the problem everyone. Is. You need to go. No, it's you know? what it is is that we are bringing again. We bring knives to the gunfight. That's what happens. It's like you know, we need to walk into the room and not be afraid to say right. what needs to be said. And also, at the same time, if it's about the tonality that needs to be given to people, it's not, it's like, it's, it is like with dealing with a child. It's like, it's not what you say, but it's how you say it. Right. And maybe perhaps if that's what we have to do to, you know, like I know as a black man, I have to be very careful about my tone when I talk to people. And I also have to be very careful about the, if there's going to be a bounce in my voice, like, you know, I usher. At, at this theater. And I, I know, you know, it's like, I'm a big imposing man standing at a musical theater spot waiting, you know, hi, walk on in, come on in. Right. I know I have to be that person because if I'm not that person, that'll scare the shit out of somebody. Right. And if you're angry, and I think that, if you yeah. DMX it like that, you're like. <laughs> Sit your ass down. No, <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> I could, but I don't. Um, but, I, but I have to be very aware of how my tone is when I'm giving whatever message I'm giving out. And that's the problem. It's like, so we have to keep figuring out all the different tones for all these different people. And part of that is because we have a really poor education system. It's like if we had people that were a little bit more educated or at least critical thinkers, 
you know, which is what we see getting beaten out of kids now is being able to critically think for themselves. It's like if we could find a way to get that reinstated somehow, we would see a difference in the way that people would take the news and take the information, that we don't have to keep dumbing it down all the time or making it real easy for people. Well, let me know, like, yeah. Well, let me ask a bigger question here, because sort of underneath what you're saying, not putting this election aside, are you hopeful for this country? Like, are you optimistic for the future of our nation remaining as the United States of America? Or does it just remain the U.S. of America and we have this on this cold war right beneath the surface where January 6th here and there happens, but in general, it's just like people are angry, but there's not really a lot of violence. There's teeny pockets of violence. So, Judy, I mean, what is it as dark as you, when you talk about going to services and Holocaust survivors relative getting second citizenship in another country? I mean, where, where do you see a, our future right now? Have you had a look at the next five, 10 years? You know, it's it's such a good question because I, I, I never thought we'd be here. So, no. it, you know, it's like, you think you know, I mean, I've been an activist my entire adult life mm -hmm. for equality, for um, HIV, AIDS, for, you know, abortion rights, um, anti-defamation stuff. You know, I have not, as you know, kept quiet. Um, <laughs> and I, I, there were so many victories where, you know, when marriage equality passed, when, um, you know, when the AIDS crisis, when we finally got to the point where it was, didn't have to be a terminal disease. Right. Um, you know, I, I go through my life thinking of all the marches I went to and brought the kids to and uh, feeling like, wow, wow, we did this. We did, and it's not even that long ago. Marriage equality is 2015, you know? know. Right. Um, and now I remember Roe v. Wade. I, you know, women could, do people realize that in, in 1973, when I was 10, 11 years old, women could not even get a mortgage without their husband's name, That's couldn't right. get a credit card. Yep. You could be fired for being pregnant. Like these, yes. these mothers need to teach their kids, you know, this is the way it was and it wasn't that long ago and i was born 17 years after the holocaust and i it was drained in me mm -hmm. um and i think parents need to do some due diligence and also th the book burning the book burning what is that what is I've that i've gone through that on my show the history of how the nazis did it and where we're going that is <laughs> right out, out of, of their the playbook yep. You know, the Treachery Act, which Hitler put in place where you could not make fun of uh, anything having to do with the Third Reich mm -hmm. or you could be killed. OK, and yet we have a president who who wants the DOJ to investigate Saturday Night Live and cannot appear at a White House correspondence dinner. This is right out of that playbook. And right. people that is the fear that the Democrats need to put forth and tell these people, listen, mm -hmm. go back 10 years. Yeah. How were you feeling? You were feeling pretty damn, you know, positive. Optimistic. You were optimistic. Yeah. Obama, yeah. Remember under Obama, how optimistic, like, look at America. It broke a new glass ceiling. We have. A oh my God. I cried. I was like, oh my God, look at them, you know? And we were proud of ourselves. Yep. And now it's, it's almost being ashamed of big swaths of this country, which I don't know where the future will be. So, Keith, to you. And you can't even you go to school because you're going to get shot. Like, what is going on here? Okay, <laughs> and, sorry. And you can't read certain books. They ban certain That's books. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and you can't books. go grocery shopping. And you can't do anything. And, and, gun, and, and as I said last night, it's embarrassing to go overseas. Right. Um, and people, and it's, it's literally like, um, are you okay? <laughs> you know, like, what's going on? <laughs> it's like an abusive relationship. That's and I have to say, I went to Israel this summer and Ben was playing basketball there. And it was, it was fascinating to be in a place where women were treated equally. <laughs> it's crazy, right? That's like how I feel as a black guy going to Canada yeah. sometimes. And they, they, I don't have anybody hiding their purse when I walk past right, them. Right, right. Like, oh, wow. 
They don't do What's that. What's this like? What's they going on? So, but what I always Keith? hire my person when I see you, Keith. <laughs> Keith, so are you optimistic in our last few minutes here? Or what is your view of the country? Are you optimistic? Are you panicked? Are you very worried? Are we at a, a, a precipice that historians are going to look back at this point and go like, that? they made a decision, that generation, and it went this way or that way? Yeah, well, I think it's going to be a hard amount of historical reckoning for everybody in the next 50 years to talk about what's going on right now. But as far as my optimism is, is that I'm optimistic that if things go the way that they are, I need to be moving to Amsterdam. Right. So <laughs> that's like... That's, you have your plan. You have your exit plan. Already. I got my exit strategy. I just have to work on the, the specifics. You know, passport is still in order. I'm just Because you know what? In the end, I don't want to spend the rest of, you know, I'm, I'm at 55 now. I don't want to spend the next 30, 40 years of my life living in fear of my government. And that's where we are headed. Right. And there's no, and there's no reason for that because we have set up a system that we don't have to have that. So we need to either figure out what this system is going to be and get back to it, or we're going to have to really do some harsh, harsh housekeeping. And so if we're, this country's not going to will, you know, and that means all these January 6th from the top to the bottom, all of these missing secret files from the top to the bottom. If that oh, means oh my an God. Ex, an yes. ex-president has to go to jail, then guess what? An ex-president has to go to jail. Yeah. And that and that is how when history looks at this period, they will look at us and say, oh, they, they handled their shit. But right now we're not handling our stuff. No, and I think this low we're in right now, it's heated, but it's a low. If Trump were to come back to power, I think you no. would see exodus from America uh, of of thousands, maybe millions of Americans, because we will know that's the end of democracy. He doesn't yep. leave. He didn't leave peacefully this last time. You think he's ever leaving? He gets back in. I'm not kidding. He never leaves office. There's no way he leaves office alive. Like he would leave, he dies. He'll stay there forever. And yeah. he has his, you know, his followers. Right. They have yep. no problem. It's a they don't fucking cult. It's a fucking cult. It's a fascist, <laughs> undemocratic cult. That's what, so, yeah. so, so before we wrap up here, Judy, again, where can people see you? You have some shows. Oh, coming up. thank you. you thank you, now. Dean. Please tell it again here at the end. Okay. Well, <laughs> Dean, um, I can be, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and uh, TikTok. Uh, at Judy Gold, J E W D Y G O L D, because I'm a Jew. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow night, I will be in Fort Lauderdale at the Sunshine Cathedral for the Performing Arts, which is an LGBTQ plus venue. And then I will be at the uh, Greenwich Odium in East Greenwich, Rhode Island on November 5th. November 5th. And, and then I will be turning 60 on November 15th. Oh, happy birthday to Dan. <laughs> I don't I, want to. Judy and I are in the same show. And so is Keith. October 28th, we're all in the indictment excitement finale Yay. show here in New York City off Broadway, indictmentexcitement.com. And Keith, if people want to follow you, where can they go, my friend? They can find me at Comedy Daddy on the Twitter and Keith Price <laughs> Comic for everything else.com. <laughs> well, uh, guys, I want to thank I you. That was your thing. That's, so That's his thing. Keith, Judy, it was a fast hour. I, yeah. I oh, yeah. How honest you guys were in, in sharing. And we're going to take a break. And while we still can, we can enjoy things in America. I honestly don't know the future <laughs> either. But we got 18 days to save the country. We went big in the midterm. We, we delayed Woo! the other side. Thanks, guys.